The Crisis Skylight Centre in the heart of East London is a national charity that provides a variety of creative and educational courses for homeless people. One of their most popular classes is singing. Because singing is my life and that's what I want to do. I just sing, I just love singing. I sing anything really. The singers at the centre have decided to put together a choir for Christmas, but they've only got two weeks to rehearse before they go back on the streets, this time as carol singers. Three teachers from two very different schools have volunteered to help them. At St Paul's Cathedral School in Westminster, they are very proud of their reputation for musical rigour. Deputy Head Paul Cousins is used to working under pressure. I suppose I get a degree of a buzz from the sort of pressure of doing something in a short space of time and seeing, seeing how we get on with that. Paul's colleague Claire Dyson will also be helping out with the choir. I'm a complete perfectionist, so I don't know how that will go down. <laughs> the other member of the team comes from the John Roan Secondary School in Greenwich. Neil Parrish is head of the music department, and like his fellow teachers, he's used to a captive audience. But this time he'll have to work hard to make sure the singers stay interested. I don't think we'd be able to maintain that group on the current repertoire if it was to go on beyond next week. And despite their very different teaching styles, the team will have to work together to create a choir that people will want to stop and listen to. The first signs of Christmas approaching can mark the beginning of the most challenging time of year for those most vulnerable in society, faced with isolation and poverty. Although they run courses all year round, at Christmas, the friendly classes at the Skylight Centre become even more important. You know, the majority of people aren't, aren't just what we, we would say was homeless, so they didn't have somewhere to live. They would have possibly health problems or mental health problems or relationship problems, which tends to be a fairly common uh, denominator for, for our client group. By being here and by having the opportunity to engage with what are really mainstream activities, like singing, dancing, all that kind of stuff, it enables people to kind of just take part in what, you know, any of us would actually want to take part in as an activity, but also to actually mix with other people so that they can develop relationships in a safe, very, very safe environment for them. Uh, you know, I think that we, we do set the bar quite high. I think that's what we should do, and that you know, people should be asked to, to rise to that challenge. And I think it's much more beneficial for people to do that. Two people that attend the singing classes are Martina and Tegan. They're both homeless, but living in nearby temporary hostel accommodation. About music, I'm depressed. And when, when, when I sing, it lifts my spirits, it, my depression goes, stuff like that. But when there's no singing classes, or there's no singing, or there's nothing happening in my life, I get very depressed. I write to three songs. I write three songs, and uh, I'm, I'm looking for the music to put on these songs. And one is jazz, because they talk about love, and I want this one in jazz. I want to make very gently, soft, and nice. Just a stone's throw from Martina and Tegan's hostel is St Paul's Cathedral School. It dates back over 800 years. For the few boys that make the grade, to become a chorister here represents the opportunity of a lifetime. <laughs> Deputy Head Paul Cousins is used to teaching musically gifted children of primary school age. How will he cope with adults who face the daily challenge of survival on the streets? Well, I understand that a lot of the people who are potentially going to be taking part um, have been involved with other projects and regular workshops there, so I know that some of them can sing, but also there may be a possibility of some that haven't been involved in that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm expecting a range of abilities, and that kind of excites me. Paul's colleague, Claire Dyson, 
has also volunteered to help out with rehearsals with the choir. Sweetheart, you can't stand picking the organ in your own church. I'm such a perfectionist with the children here because I know what they can achieve. I think that's going to be the issue is I don't know what they, they're going to be able to achieve. So it'll be very interesting to see how much I can push them into perfection. <laughs> The John Roan Secondary School in Greenwich has been serving the community for over 300 years. Neil Parrish is head of the music department and has some experience of adult choirs outside the school. Well, I think when teaching music, it's often about giving the people that you work with, whether adults or children, giving them the confidence, telling them that the sound they make, no matter how tentative, is a good sound, and build on that, and try never to say to them, no, we don't want to hear that, no, stop there, that's the wrong note, otherwise people just become more and more inhibited. You have to have to keep saying to them, you have to get it wrong to get it right, and that's something which I keep frying the children, you have to get it wrong to get it right. Hey, buddy, please, can you lend me your time? I got a good friend. When you do this, what I do here every day as a school teacher, your customers come, the bell goes, 30 people come in, and you work with them. What I like about working with voluntary groups like this and all adult groups is, unless you're presenting a good rehearsal, and it's interesting, and it's relevant, and they're having fun, they just don't show the next week. Tonight is the very first meeting for the carol singers. Paul has come on his own, and he's going to try out some warm-up techniques to test the voices of the singers. Nice sound. He wants to find out their vocal range before the rehearsals start properly. Now, you'll get used to these as you come along, and we'll move through them quite quickly. I'm going to teach you what I believe is quite a fun one now, and it's called Nice Cup Of. Do nice cup of, nice cup of, and really exaggerate when we get to the top, tea, because it's a crazy, silly, ridiculous word. So we're just going to go up a bit, we'll go a bit faster, and I want to see everybody smiling. Here we go, and... Nice cup of, 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 nice cup of tea. I mean, tonight was very, very frustrating because I was trapped behind the piano. Try, and it, I, I don't like doing that. That's, that's not my preferred style of teaching with this sort of group because it's so much about getting out there. As you notice, that bit where I'm kind of, I had to just leave the piano and go out there. I'm going to give up on the piano because I need to communicate with you. So let's try it. <coughs> After two, one, two. Now bring us a figgy pudding. Now bring us a figgy pudding. Now bring us a figgy pudding. And bring some out here. Good, I've got some fabulous faceage going on there. Let's try it one more time. Even faster. And it's really small and it's really, really like little insects or birds pecking away. We really want some figgy pudding, okay? One. Two. Now bring us a figgy pudding, now bring us a figgy pudding, now bring us a figgy pudding, and bring some out here. Good. Could you tell me, particularly ladies, if you know you are a soprano and that's what you normally do, and you sing the top part, and you're good at singing the tune and you can sing all the high notes, is there anyone who knows that's them? Okay. Um, do any of you know that you're not that person and you not you sing the harmony bits and you sing lower generally? Peter, yeah, I, I've actually got a high voice. You've got a high voice, this is good. We've got one. I, I'm, I'm feeling quite good about it as a project. I mean, they, they can sing in tune, they can sing in harmony and they're picking up things quite quickly, mostly by rate, which is, which is good news. Well, I'd be, I'd be, it'd be nicer if we were doing a few carols and something else as well, but if we're just doing carols, we're doing carols. One of the choir, David, has been homeless on and off for most of his adult life, but he's beginning to develop his love of music. He spends most of his day at a nearby hostel and most of his hours learning to play the guitar. I mean, I guess I've been, most, quite a lot of my life, actually, I've been, I've been pretty directionless, as in the only thing I ever really wanted to do was, was sing and never, ever did anything about it, so I just sort of put it about, done the normal thing, worked because, well, you have to work, you know. But i um, sort of been all right at everything I've done, but never, no, no real passion or desire to, to stay there, you know. I always feel like I'm, I'm missing out on, on what I want to do. And the thing with doing this singing class is it's good for me in a, in a different way because I'm getting used to singing with other people. It, you know, with a group, you want it all to sound right. 
Whereas when you're doing it by yourself, it doesn't matter how you do it, it's gonna sound right. <laughs> It's the second rehearsal, and this time Neil and Paul will be working together. Okay, cheesy smiles. With only three more rehearsals to go, it's essential that they gel as a team and work well with the group. But already Neil is having doubts about the level of challenge they've set for the choir. Clearly some of them are used to sort of singing repertoire, which is far more advanced than what we get in them to sing, which is like simple sort of three-note harmony lines. And I think we need to challenge them a lot more and to get more from them. I don't think we'd be able to maintain that group on the current repertoire if it was to go on beyond next week. He came from the glorious kingdom. Wow. Generally, thank you all of you, you're making a very, very nice sound. I've got a few pages corners turned down in, in the book just for ideas of things to think about so I'll, I think we, we definitely need another piece of the same kind of ilk that we're doing, maybe a little bit more challenging but mm, that's what I'm going to be thinking about as well yeah, yeah if you've got any ideas bring yeah. it on Back at school after the weekend, Paul is a little nervous about the next rehearsal. We'll pretty much see how it goes. I've, I've arranged a couple of pieces, I've got quite a few ideas. I'm not, there aren't huge expectations on the amount of the quantity of stuff we do. So we'll just go with them and see how, see how it goes. And over in Greenwich, Neil has found a newly written song, The Big Issue, that he wants to try out with the choir tonight. I, th I think my role in the project contrasts quite well with Paul's role. I think we've, it's, it's quite, quite good how it's worked out. We both come at this from different traditions of music making. And I think it'd be fair to say that I'm probably a little bit more experimental. It's the third rehearsal. And this time, Paul and Neil are being joined by Claire. She's determined to boost their morale. <laughs> Well, I, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest, when I, when I went in there. The only homeless people I've seen are ones that we see on the street when you're walking around and, you know, I'll, I, I will give them money and buy the big issue. And, but I didn't, I didn't know what to expect, really. So it was quite an eye-opener. There were some real characters there. Neil's brought along the sheet music of the new song that he'd like to rehearse. Too loud, just keep this sort of um, like how big, big issue. That's great, yeah. Big issue, keep it going. Big issue, two, three, four. Can you? Two, three. Big issue. But it's not long before big the issue. choir is struggling to follow the music. Quite yes. an ambitious pace. Yeah, but I think, I think, I think it's good it to can... go for something which is not going to be quite finished <clears throat> and complete just to give us yeah, a reason it's to work rehearse, in actually. Progress. Otherwise, I think yeah. by the end of the next rehearsal, we will have more or less got it all wrapped up and it'll just be, but can you come out again just mm. to sing it all through again? And I think it's nice to go for, the, go for the sky sometimes. It was quite interesting. There was one lady who couldn't, she obviously couldn't read music, so she didn't understand that you go from the top line and there's sort of four other lines underneath and then you have to jump down. So it was quite interesting. It was quite nice to see that by the end of it, she understood what she was, what she was doing and what she was reading. But they, it, they were fantastic tonight, they so enthusiastic. I mean, it, the, the great thing with, with the kind of repertoire that we're doing is if it comes to it, at the end, you can always kind of get through in unison, can't you? Sort of, mm. right, we'll just keep this as simple and straightforward and you can, you know, they've, they've got the words, they know the, the tunes, they know what's going on, so... It, it's relatively straightforward as far as that's concerned. What we do need to think about is how we can pad out the programme for the actual performance. It's only a week to go and two rehearsals before their final performance. It's taking place at New Spitalfields Market, which is gearing up for Christmas. The carol singers will have to compete with the stallholders to grab the shoppers' attention. Back at the Skylight Centre, 
Martina has turned up early to try out her own song with Neil. Oh, it's a beautiful world. If you keep going, I'll, I'll hear it. Wish not to recount to us when you open your heart. Something like that? Yeah, try and uh, feel like a, a sort of beat going as we're saying. So if I give. So feel that sort of beat, that swing beat. Start again with that. <coughs> Two, three, four, one. What a beautiful word to describe the feeling. Wish not to recant to us. I'm so happy when I'm in love. I feel so nice. I feel so sexy. I feel so woman. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, 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 keep, keep, keep. So you put the music to. <laughs> so I would like to have the opportunity to record the songs. But I don't know if it's possible because sometimes, you know, you have to have a lot of help and be lucky. I'm lucky normally, but you have to be lucky to be able to do that. I feel so woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about reading a text and delivering it. It's about an experiment on the day of making this song matter, looking at the spirit of the words, that we'd be able to just sort of have somebody just improvising a line, fitting with the harmonies and, and taking it from there. If you could sit in these two, if you two could sit in these two chairs and you two could go over there and sit next to Claire. Paul's determined to get the whole choir harmonising. If you've got someone who knows what they're doing next to you, just kind of pointing you in the right direction. Actually, it's relatively straightforward, and over time, you do, you do work out what it's doing, and we're beginning to see that today. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Lovely. So it's quite good they're starting to learn that the main part of music is listening and listening to each other. So it was, it was really interesting today hearing the ladies compared to last week. There was a huge difference. Lovely. I think that is going to sound beautiful, because you all know it quite well. Day job-wise, we're kind of getting to that point of just sort of, you need the end of term and you just want it all to be over. So actually, it's quite nice to come to something where, because at school we're dealing with children who are exhausted and are ready for the Christmas holidays and they just want to go home. Whereas actually here, we've got a fresh group who aren't experiencing that and that's really uplifting. You kind of get to the end of the day and you just, in theory, you just, you just want to go home. But actually, you come here and you've got people who are really enjoying themselves yeah. and loving what they're doing. It seems that the rehearsals might be starting to pay off. David has even written a song especially for the performance. I thought I'd do something about homelessness, with it being sort of representing crisis or, you know, fundraiser for crisis. So I'm, I'm working on a, a homeless song, which will be finished. Writing a song in itself is, is special. One of the hardest things I found I'm finding about songwriting, which I know I'll sort of get used to, you know, when I've when I've been doing it for a bit longer, it's like no matter what you're writing about, you you're literally putting your heart, you know, on your sleeve. And for for me, sometimes I find it quite hard to um, I write a song, and even now I could look through there and find find songs which I think you know sound really nice, but I look at it and for some reason, to me it's like I don't want to hear people. I don't want people to hear me sort of singing in that way about that, whatever it is, you know. Trust in your heart and you'll find something And turn your spirit back in the human race Christmas season has hit full swing in London, but for some of the choir, 
It's not a time they particularly look forward to. I, I love the build-up to Christmas and um, the New Year and all the rest of it, but it's like Christmas Day and New Year's Day in particular, I've never really been a big fan of. Um, you know, that's family time and I don't sort of have any contact with my family and I haven't done for quite a while, so... Um, I used to have quite bad Christmases, but I think as I've got older, they're sort of getting better. It would seem that especially at this time of year, having somewhere to go and taking part in this kind of group activity can be a real lifesaver. Because I'm not in with my family, it's not the same, because we had a particular celebration with family, it's normal. I don't know what I'm going to do it, you know. Problems around homelessness and Christmas. Um, obviously, everybody else is having a good time. They have families to go to. They have shelters. They have, you know, love and kindness from other people. Um, if you're living out on the streets, that's kind of that's not available to you. Um, what we try to do around that particular situation is provide an environment where people can come and share in goodwill with other people. It's the final rehearsal for the choir and Neil's last chance to try things out before the performance. Uh, we had an idea that tonight we'd look at a big issue song again and one of the group is called Jason and he's a poet and he's got some poems that we can use tonight and we may be thinking of using the poems as a whole or taking out some of the lines from the poems and then fitting that into the, into the song as a whole and just, just working with it really as an experiment. to compose a piece that will let people know what it's like to be homeless at Christmas or to be on your own or just lonely and I'm going to talk the words so it'll be like uh, every face paints a picture. Can you see? I walked a hundred hours, my feet are all wet and cold, the rest of me is the same. I stand alone, my feet wet and cold. I remember what special time this is, still nowhere to go. No space at the inn. I remember the fun of opening presents, twisting and turning and pulling the bright coloured paper. He just started extemporising and making up some words and fitting it with the harmony, and it just sounded absolutely beautiful. And straight away, that was the idea I wanted for the song. Every window fully dressed. It's Christmas time again. had quite a chill factor when we got to the end there. I was thinking, oh gosh. Um, so I, th I think on Sunday that's going to be quite moving. He came from the glorious kingdom. Oh, yes. I mean, it, it, you've got to remember that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, we haven't even had five hours with them and with the big issue song and stuff like that. We've had some complicated stuff to learn and they've, they've done remarkably well and we're singing in three parts here and we're adding percussion and we're... It's a bit of drama in That's there as well. That's my favourite so. bit, is the Virgin Mary song, really, when we can just stop with the keyboards yeah. and just get them singing in yeah, three I've parts. Yeah, I've noticed And it's really quite nice, because nice. they get the sort of sense of feeling singing a three-part harmony, which mm. makes it sound like, while well, we're cracked, you know, we've got some harmony singing, a cappella singing. And they say that his name was It's got to work. You've got one shot yeah. at it, and that's it. So I, th I think there's a sort of unwritten language between musicians, isn't there, that you just sort of... Kind of common understanding. Show this. <laughs> it's the big day, but the temperature is well below zero. It couldn't be more cold if it tried, so I apologise for that. Wherever goes, goes. I think it can go well. Today, hopefully, is going to be my favourite bit. OK, ladies and gentlemen, right now, at this very second, we're going to start our carol singing. Please. With only a few shoppers around, will they manage to pull together an audience? The carol singers, come down and support the homeless charity crisis. We came from the glory, we came from the glorious I hope people stop, I hope people listen, I hope that it moves people to sort of change whatever they're doing at that moment, whatever they're thinking about, that the music sort of says something to somebody in the audience and sort of back the other way as well.
it, it was a really nice thing to do at the end of the school day to come along and work with some fabulous people um, and to have some great fun making music, which is what it was about at the end of the day. So, Can you see? I've looked in many windows. As I've passed, the first thing... Uh, I'd just like to say I, was very, I felt honoured to work with Neil and Paul, who, who are a fine gentleman. You get wrapped up into the into the world of your own school environment and you, you think it's everything but uh, you know sometimes you get more invigorated just by using the skills that you've got from teaching but just sort of taking them elsewhere and make it happen. I just bought a new guitar on Thursday, so I shall spend my time uh, probably writing more songs and trying to build up my repertoire a bit. I was trying again in my room to sing in that for to remember the tune. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It was so good, and they loved all of them, loved every minute of it. Despite the freezing weather, the choir did capture the attention of passers-by and they raised over £200 for crisis. At the end of the day, we got there, we sang, we performed and they did really well and hopefully they've raised some money into the bargain as well. Mm -hmm.